shares of Trump Media uh, looking well, down as well. Plummeting yesterday as the company filed it for additional stock issuance on the same day that former uh, President Donald Trump's hush money trial began. The stock now down over 40 percent since it started publicly trading last month. We saw that um, filing come through uh, literally while Squawk was on. We we're trying to make sense of it. We're going to continue right now because Liz Hoffman is here, Semaphore Business and Finance Editor and a CNBC contributor. She's got a big conference coming up in Washington, D.C. later this week. So congratulations ahead of that. Thank you. But let's uh, let's talk about where what you when you saw that filing, what you think that filing is even trying to say. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I've read it a couple times now. I think ultimately it's actually not they're not issuing new stock. They're registering some warrants that were sort of already baked into the pie. But again, like this is a company that just like incredibly volatile, not that good at explaining anything it's doing and heavily owned by retail investors who don't really know what's going on which is how you end up with, uh, with a move like that. So but I think the big question is, when do we think that this board, if, if, if the board is going to decide to allow the former president or others uh, to sell their shares before the six-month window, how does that work? What kind of disclosure would be necessary? Does the stock move up or down on that news? I mean, I think these are the things that I think people who are invested in this are trying to figure out. And then the question is, what it means to be invested in this company. Right. So for the, which way it moves, like you can make a case for either way, right? Like it, it floods the market with new shares, which should generally depress the price. But actually, there, there isn't, this is a hard stock somehow to get your hands on because there just isn't a lot of it. So you could see it, you know, creating a, a, a buying swell that kind of brings the whole thing up. I don't know. I mean, God, the shareholder lawsuits that would immediately follow waiving a lockup. Um, you can do it, but I think it'd be, be pretty messy. But then I think to the you're trying to make it's like why does anyone own this stock this is a company with a single product that not that many people use uh it has been losing money hand over fist i'm not surprised eventually i think you'll you'll see them issue new equity because they're gonna have to right so it was 60 million dollars last year i think doesn't so, this allow them to get around the the issue of the waiver i mean if, if it effectively brings forward some sales and so it's to your point about you know like a, an uprising if, if a waiver were granted it being so unfair etc this actually allows him to sort of get around that. I think what it does is it it would allow him to be the president, uh, President Trump, to be more liquid in that it's converting some warrants into stock that he could perhaps borrow against. Mm -hmm. That's one piece we haven't really mm -hmm. talked about and seen. There hasn't been a lot of disclosure, um, but there's a big slug of stock worth still probably a billion, right. half two billion dollars that he could borrow. Read, look, there are people that you can find on Reddit and elsewhere who actually talk about this. Not as a meme stock or as some as an investment, but actually as a financing vehicle, literally it a is. campaign financing you, vehicle, you know the a transfer of, that, of wealth from the investor com investor community could be effectively a donor who's saying I'm effectively donating my funds to uh, the former president by investing in this stock such that he can then sell his shares later to be used right. for the campaign. And, and, and the beauty of that is yep. that if you lose money, you take the loss. So <laughs> you can donate money. Right. The stock goes up. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm supporting President Trump. That's exactly what I want to do. Stock goes down. You lose money. Right. And you take the loss. But again, Capital it's, it's loss. a little hard to tell. Like, again, you can donate to President Trump's campaign if you want to, but you could take the loss, but then are we assuming these are really sophisticated investors who are doing, like, tax loss harvesting? I don't Probably really not, know. but I'm it's just saying that that's, that, that well, is I think totally what, you need, what, you should, what we need to watch for, by the way, is if, in fact, the stock actually moves higher in a meaningful way, could it be that there are a bunch of people, very wealthy people, possibly people from outside the country or others, who actually literally are pushing the stock up? Meaning... It's not an investment. It really is a way to actually transfer wealth. I, Rather than just being a, 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 a retail investor, which I, I always think when we use that phrase, it's sort of dismissive, but, but it shouldn't be. I mean, for the moment, this thing is still trading to me like a, like a meme stock, and right. you know, it's going to be four, six months out from an election. I would expect it to be a bit of a heartbeat mm -hmm. for the campaign. But, I, you know, this is more broadly, I haven't totally understood the business case for these kind of ideological uh, echo chambers. You've seen Parler, Gab, Rumble, like they were all supposed to be the next big thing and I don't think they are. And even more broadly, you know, Public Square, kind of the, right. the America first marketplace, when, you know, it was worth 20 bucks a share, now it's down under five. Right. Like I think if you're going to try to 
own the libs. These things are kind of built on conflict. Oh, well, let me ask you this.